What do you want from me? I opened my eyes to see a woman staring down at me with a very sly smirk on her face. I opened my mouth to scream in fright, but a hand quickly covered my mouth. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. No screaming now. Too early, silly girl. I could only stare up at the woman above me. I still felt weak, not having the strength to move and fight her off. She was very beautiful, but I felt more anger than amazement. Hmm. Why do the boys like you? You're unique, yes. But that can't be all that you have going for you. Rage began to consume my core again. This woman, whoever she was, was making me mad! She must have known that she'd let the smirk grow onto her face. Ooh, you're feisty. That could be why. Before I could bite her hand in anger, she removed her hand from my lips, standing up and staring down at me from her place next to my bed. What the hell do you want? This is so bizarre. <laughs> this is really bizarre. Like, why are you here? I quickly sat up and glared daggers at the intruder. Who the hell are you and why are you in my room? The woman began to laugh, making the rage inside of me increase. I wanted to punch her, but I waited for her answer. <laughs> One punch! <laughs> How silly of me. I forgot that we demons are not well known of in your world. You can call me Diana, little human. Diana? Demon? Dirty Diana demon. You're a demon? I am. But I'm much more than just an average demon. What do you mean? Silly girl. I'm a serious. <gasps> Gasp! I stared at Diana in shock. A succubus? First incubi, now a succubus. Great. Now I had met both genders of sex demons. Diana crossed her arms under her bosom and looked at my body. Well, you are pretty. A goody little two-shoes, aren't you? I moved out and stood up from the bed, still glaring at Diana. Why are you here? Well, I came here to clean up what the boys clearly forgot to clean. <laughs> Man, so sloppy. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean by that? I mean erasing your memories, oh. sweetie. Oh. Oh. Uh. Never, never mind. This woman wasn't serious, was she? She comes into my room and spouts this? This was ridiculous. I began to walk towards my door, wanting to leave the room. The boys could get rid of her. I had no mind about dealing with her myself. The boys are gone, sweetie. Already? I froze in place. What? They were gone already? No way. I turned to Diana, glaring hard at her as she kept a smirk to me. You're lying. Am I? If you want to go see for yourself, you can. But I promise you'll be wasting your time. I stared, trying to find any hint if she was lying. She had to be. The boys wouldn't just up and leave without resting first, right? Diana crossed her arms and waited for me to make a choice. I decided to believe her for now. I find some hint in this conversation. What do you mean, take my memories? <laughs> well, we demons can't have just anyone knowing about us. You have to completely devote your soul to learning about us. And even then, it's not always guaranteed that you can be granted knowledge of us. What makes me not deserve to know everything? I was attacked by devils. I found the boys in my house, wounded, and sheltered them. I think I deserve to remember those moments. Diana allowed a laugh, running a hand through her hair before looking back at me, amused. You were attacked by a gang and were almost killed. You found five homeless men and let them stay in your home. There's nothing special about either of these instances. I'd say they're unusual at least. They're pretty unusual. Yes, there was! A human like you can't understand the rules. The boys themselves aren't even aware of the rules. If they're, they're princes, how are they not aware? Enough. Diana flipped her hair before looking into me with a stern look, because all she Listen, can do is flip her sweetie, hair. You're not going back to bed or leaving this house with those memories. I'm taking them from you, one way or another. I glared, standing my ground. You're not taking my memories. I'm not letting you. And what do you plan to do with them, huh? Tell the press? Gossip to your friends that demons exist? Confess to your parents that you had demon servants and were almost killed by a devil gang? Yeah, like, that'd be a good plan. <laughs> now she was making me mad. Did she seriously think I was this stupid? Those memories were precious to me. 
and I wasn't going to let her win over my mind. These memories are important to me. I know that other creatures exist. I know that magic exists. I'm more open-minded now. Open-minded or gullible? What? What does she mean by that? The point of being open-minded was to be open to all thought. How is that anything close to being gullible? There is nothing to learn from remembering the boys that won't bring trouble. I'm merely saving you from that. There are more than just demons who want to keep their existence a secret. There are many creatures in this world that don't want to be known of, and you remembering a small fragment is not acceptable to them without good reason. Diana smirked. If you would have kept the boys, or at least had one of them around, they'd be a little more lenient to listen to your pleas. However, you're about to go into tomorrow without any of them around. I couldn't believe my ears. There were more than just demons. Other fictional creatures existed, like furries. <laughs> there was a system. What? Diana sighed and snapped her fingers, lifting my body up from the ground with her magic. Look, I can kill you and no longer waste what little time I have, or I can erase your memories and go on with my life. I have more important things to do above arguing with you. I looked down at the ground. What the shit? <laughs> I looked, I looked down at the ground to see something that made every nerve in my body quickly quake in fear. Um... That was a growl. On the ground was a large open mouth with sharp wet teeth. Oh my god. Leading to a black empty abyss. I could feel the heat from the mouth's breath pant against my floating body. What Jesus! The fuck, Diana? Ah! I looked at Diana who was looking at me with a stern and almost heartless gaze. Make a choice, sweetie. What the fuck, Give up your memories or be a demon snack. I warn you, oh, hi, Molly. he's quite the in. biter. I was panicking. I was about to die. Again. The boys weren't here to protect me. What was I going to do? What what can we do? Can we uh, wait, no, don't don't make a deal with Diana. Don't do that. Why? What does she do? Oh, I think we'll be on Diana's route then. Oh, true. Okay. Uh, um, fighting will just get us killed. Yeah, I think we There's should no go. There's no way we can fight against her. If we're gonna be a human, we gotta give up the memories. And then we can't cry over Damien anymore. <laughs> my mind began to wonder, wander. Were the memories truly worth my life? Not if you're not that close to them. No. Nope. Not in this world. Not in this route. Not in this AU. Not in this route! I remembered the way the boys helped organize the house party and helped me after home helped me home after Malx's ordeal. But then I remembered. I'm only human. I wasn't a demon. I wasn't special. The world of magic was too large for me. I already had a world to face without magic being involved. I felt a wave of sadness run through me, replaying the memories of all that had happened the past few days, one time before speaking up. Fine. Take my memories. I couldn't keep them. They were beyond my world. They were beyond what I needed to know. I was never meant to know of them. Diana nodded. Glad you understand now. The pit beast below me closed his jaw. Vanishing into nothing as I was lowered to the ground. I stood up straight and looked to Diana, resolved. Diana sighed before closing her hand and muttering Latin phrases under her breath. Loud enough for me to barely hear. She then opened her hand and revealed a small purple vial. What is that? A memory potion. It will remove all of the memories of demons and magic from your mind. With the memories gone, you can live your life as free as you want. What about the boys? I have a spell for them. As soon as you drink that potion, you sign your contract with oh. me, and I will take the boys back to where they belong. So if you don't fall in love with them, she does get them. Ooh. Will they remember me? I'll make sure they won't. They won't even remember ever thinking oh. about coming to the human world. That's kind of fucked up. Why didn't you use it before now? Why do I have to drink it knowingly? Because demon magic isn't black and white, dear. 
The one catch is that the potion has to be drunk with full natural consent. So I can't just slip it into your chocolate milk or pour it into your mouth as you sleep. That's the downside of good succubus magic. So I'll be... A plain, boring human. No potential, no abilities, no memories to even have abilities. You'll be a plain Jane girl in a plain Jane world. I nodded before looking to the vial. My memory in exchange for my humanity. I popped the cork of the vial and gingerly brought it to my lips. Goodbye, magic. Goodbye, demons. Goodbye, strange future. Hello, normalcy. This sounds like a bad deal. I tilted my head back and chugged the drink down, feeling its magic already starting to work as it reached the inside of my mouth. I felt dizzy and sick, but I sucked down every last drop of the liquid. I felt the memories of the boys fade away. I never met them in my house when I moved in. I never was attacked by Malx or his goons. I never was kidnapped. I never met Diana. As I finished drinking, I felt my body grow weak, almost becoming unable to continue standing up. My vision was blurred and fuzzy, and I couldn't help but let my eyes shut. I asked for this. I wouldn't have the boys protecting me anymore. I didn't even open my eyes when I finally fell forward into Diana's arms. It's for your own good, sweetie. Forget about it and be normal. I'm sorry. I felt my mind slowly relax. There were no demons, no devils, no magic to drive me crazy. Everything was normal. Everything was peaceful. Everything was ordinary. Just the way Diana wanted. Just the way I wanted. Eventually, the morning arrived and the sun screamed at me to get up. Surprisingly, I woke up before my alarm, which was nice. I stretched out and quickly got dressed, getting ready for school. I went over in my mind what had happened over the weekend, suddenly feeling wary. I had moved in Friday night, held a house party Saturday, and enjoyed my day Sunday. Sounds about right. I scooped up my bag and headed downstairs to the dining room. The room was empty and I felt hungry. I needed to eat something. I looked at my phone and saw a text I must have completely forgotten about. Naomi asked if I was okay. If I was okay, what did she mean? Did something happen yesterday? I tried to remember, but for some reason, yesterday's events seemed blurry and almost blank. I remembered going to school, dealing with Lizette, then going home. I don't remember, however, what exactly went on. I must have been, or else I wouldn't be safe at home. I rubbed my head, trying to shake out exhaustion. Damn studying. I sighed and texted back. Sorry, I forgot to text you back. Everything was fine. See you when you get here. I made myself some quick toast and coffee, needing a jump start. I felt drained, and I did not want to fall asleep in class. Something bothered me, though. My house felt empty, or at least emptier than when I came for that for some reason. I could have put my finger on it, but it slightly bothered me. I finished my food and quickly rushed to the front, waiting for Naomi's car and confident that nothing was going to happen. I avoided talking about what had happened yesterday. I'll be riding with you guys from now on to and from school. As we entered the school, we quickly gathered our things from our lockers and headed to class. There were no events, to my surprise. Naomi and Susan took their seats around me. Susan in front of me, Naomi beside me. The bell rang and the class was greeted by our teacher. History wasn't as boring as economics, but I still managed to space out in that class just the same because Diana wasn't there telling us how fairy tales really happened. Naomi seemed to be very tense, focused on her desk more so than usual. I was almost tempted to poke her and see what was wrong. My, find, my phone, though, vibrated in my pocket. Thank God I set it on vibrate before class. I pulled out my phone and checked it, check, checked it, seeing a text from Suzu. I began to text back, suddenly going into text conversation. Dude, what's up with Naomi? I don't know. Man, I hope everything's all right with her. This isn't like her at all. Same here. I looked over once again at Naomi. She was intensely scribbling in her notebook, almost successfully so. The grip on her new-looking purple pencil was almost tight enough to bend at each stroke she made with it. 
By the way, Kay hmm. kind of let me in on what's going on with Naomi. Oh. What's going on with her? Apparently, Naomi's got a crush on someone. Like, <laughs> huge crush. She's been to the cafe to see Kay multiple times since the beginning of the school year. Really? I couldn't believe it. Was Naomi having romance troubles? I looked over once more. Something in my heart slightly skipped at seeing her again. I was worried, yes, but for some reason I felt a little angry. Who did Naomi have a crush on? Why was she so nervous about it? Why isn't it me? Woe is me! Why couldn't she tell me? I put my phone back into my pocket, ending the conversation. Hopefully Naomi would explain things to me soon. I was almost abnormally curious about her and this mystery crush. Time continued until the end of the class period in that exact status. Naomi held her tense ground, focusing on nothing with the in incoherent scribbles on her paper, while Suzu and I watched on in worry, not caring for the class we were in. As the bell rang, Naomi stood up suddenly. Uh, I need to go. See you in economics. Wait. <laughs> Whoa. And for the first time ever, Naomi was the first person out the door. She's becoming a delinquent. What Someone get her a metal bag. I don't know. Chase We're gonna chase, her. chase, 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 chase. I needed to see what was wrong. Naomi was important to me, and I needed to help her. I instantly grabbed my things and rushed out of the room. Whoa, Anderson! Hey! I wasn't listening. I needed to get to Naomi. The hall was full of students which made spotting Naomi a little harder. I wished I was just a little taller. Naomi! I began to push through the crowd trying to find a trace of her. Her hair, her shirt, anything. I managed to catch a glimpse of her white bow, instinctively following it down the hall into the classroom. Naomi's class was the other way. Where was she going? I continued following and peeked into the classroom, seeing no one else in there except Naomi. What shocked me was seeing Naomi standing over an empty desk, whimpering and almost sobbing. No! Sweetie! I didn't know what to do. The world behind me in the hall went in slow motion as I stared at Naomi's back. She obviously wanted to be alone, but I wanted to help her and fix whatever was bothering her. Help her. Help her! Help her! I couldn't leave her like this. I quickly stepped into the room and closed the door, making Naomi flinch and freeze up. Naomi. Naomi gasped before turning to me, a shocked expression on her face. Tears had painted her cheeks, which made my heart sink in my chest. Naomi, what's wrong? Uh, it's nothing. Nothing. I... Naomi quickly rubbed her eyes and face, trying to cover her face and clean it, with sad clean it of sadness. I pressed my lips together, not believing her. Naomi, talk to me. You were acting strange in history. I was just listening to the lecture. Bullshit. You were scribbling in your notebook. I was watching almost the entire class period. I have bad handwriting. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> no, she didn't. She had the most precise and elegant handwriting I had ever seen. Why was she lying to me? What was going on? What was making her so distraught? Naomi, whatever is troubling you, let me help you. You can't help me, okay? I stepped back, feeling the sudden anger in her voice. She covered her mouth, regretting what came out of it and stared almost in pure fright at me. Naomi. I stepped towards her, not wanting to scare her, but wanting to be closer. Naomi didn't seem affected, so I continued to walk towards her. Eventually, we were only a desk away from each other. Tell me. Naomi stared before letting out a shuddering sigh, nodding in defeat. I slowly took a seat in the desk in front of me, watching as she moved to stand in front of it. I've been having some issues, okay? Issues? What about? Well, I mean, it's not an issue, but... I mean, it's hard to describe. Is someone bothering you? In a way. Is someone bullying you? No. Does someone have a crush on you? Well, actually, it's the opposite. You have a crush on someone. Yeah, but I... I don't know how to handle it. I mean, I used to believe I liked only guys, but all of a sudden I had these feelings. So I went to Kay, but she only listened and told me to just go oh, along honey. with it. But I don't know how to, I mean... You have a crush on a girl? That's not bad, is it? I'm the no, one sweetie, who always it's not wanted bad. to talk about guys. No, it's guys. not bad. Oh my god. My heart hurts. No. 
You can like whoever you want to like. But what if I liked someone who was really close to me? My mind instantly went to Suzu. You're an idiot, Laundry. <laughs> You're an idiot. Did Naomi like her? There was no way. Then again, maybe Suzu's rebellious personality interested Naomi enough. <laughs> like, <laughs> bad girl Naomi. Sorry, bad girl Suzu with good girl Naomi. <laughs> He's gone maybe through a bad girl phase. After all these years, it wouldn't be impossible. Yet somehow I felt a little jealous. Naomi like Suzu? How could that be? Well, you're not even asking her, you're assuming! I had to stop. This wasn't helping Naomi. I needed to help her feel better beyond anything else. So what? If you like someone close to you, that makes the feeling that much more powerful. Who knows, maybe she likes you back? Naomi stared at me with a look I couldn't, almost couldn't understand. It seemed strange, but it was almost... loving. What if... the person I like <laughs> is... you? <laughs> I felt like I was dreaming. What? She liked me? Huh? When? How? Yeah, there is not as much of effort put into these CGs as the other ones. Mm. I almost wonder if it was a completely different artist. I kind of it, like the the coloring is the same, but I think I think the lines were done by someone else. Interesting. Naomi looked down at the desk, her face turning red. I've liked you for a while now. I mean, well, I've liked you since last year. I was really not sure about how I felt, though, until last semester, when I started seeing Kay. God, imagine how she must have felt when you start seeing the Incubi. Oh, no! She told me that what I was feeling was normal, even though I kind of thought I'd always go for men. I mean, <laughs> not that I have anything against people who aren't straight, but like... Naomi whimpered as she fumbled over her words. I found it adorable, but I couldn't help but stare in surprise at her. She liked me? Gently, Naomi took one of my hands and brought it to her lips, closing her eyes to breathe before looking back at me. I like you. I really do. Okay? I felt my heart flutter and flattery. Naomi, one of my best friends, liked me. I wasn't sure what to say. I think your heart's fluttering for a different reason, honey. <laughs> Naomi's face was almost as red as a tomato, but she continued to hold my hand, wanting me to say something. She was a patient woman. I guess the confession really got her nerves out because now she was calm and seemed relaxed. What could I say to her, though? This was a huge deal for both her and me. She had been one of my best friends for the majority of my life, and here she was, confessing to having a crush on me. It was surreal, yet it made me feel both strange and fluffy. Naomi smiled and gently lowered my hand. I watched as she let out of her lax sigh. I feel so much better after saying that. Thank you. She is a sweetheart. She is a sweetheart. I really like her. I couldn't help but stare at Naomi longer. Was she not expecting me to say anything in return? A sentence bubbled in my stomach, forcing itself out of my mouth without filter. Go out with me. Go out with me! I did not know what came over me. I let it spill out. I liked her, though. I liked her a lot. She was adorable and cute in her own special way. I loved that she was an individual and stayed true to herself no matter what Suzu or I did. Sure, she was a little ditzy, but... <laughs> that added to the charm. Laundry, that's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi stared wide-eyed at me, blushing as red as could be. I was positive that if she blushed any more, she would faint from all the blood rushing into her cheeks to color them that red. Did, did, did you just... Yes. I did. <laughs> I stood and gently took Naomi's hand. I needed her to know how I felt. She poured her feelings out to me. It was more than fair to share mine with her. I really like you too. You're adorable and I love that about you. You're kind and, and, and sophisticated, and you have this sort of charm. Naomi, will you go out with me? Naomi was completely red in the face, but her eyes started to water. 
Rogue Aww. tears dripped from the edges of her eyes as she smiled at me. Yes! Yes, I will! Oh. Naomi rushed around the desk, separating us, and hugged me tightly. I held her to me and smiled. I felt a small part of my heart fill with pure joy. I felt happy, like nothing was going to stand in my way with Naomi to help me. Months went by since Naomi's confession. We were happy and eventually graduation came along. The rest of the story could almost be passed over. I graduated from school as one of the top ten students in my class. My family was proud, even my dad. Maybe it was because I did my best in school. Maybe it was because I was finally a woman in his eyes. Naomi, my girlfriend, went to culinary school right after school, learning the basics of cooking and business. Her desire to make a cafe was astounding, and soon she was ranking at the top of her classes within the first weeks. Kay offered Naomi a job at the Pink Lady Cafe, letting her serve with Lily as a supervisor. Naomi instantly accepted and worked with Lily to bring customers in the town the best coffee and treats ever made. But what of my future? Well, with Naomi's support, I finally decided to stand up for myself. After I graduated, Andrew and I presented our cases and the board decided to have Andrew step into the CEO position of the Anderson Toys Company. Bet she got disowned for that. My father was beyond shocked. I congratulated Andrew and went to the University of Chicago to get a degree while Andrew dedicated himself full-time to the company. Andrew vowed to respect the wishes of the late CEO and help the company become an even grander company. Andrew had a large amount of heart, so it was easily accomplished. My grandfather would have been proud to have seen how Andrew helped shine. With the CEO position filled, my father had no choice but to let me decide my future, which made me happy beyond compare. No longer would I have the future scaring me into a corner. I could choose my life on my own. That being said, I was still scared of where the future was going to take me. What did I want to do? Did I want to help Andrew build the company? Did I want to venture off on my own? Naomi reassured me she would support me and help me through whatever I wanted to do. I was grateful and would never forget that promise. I was happy, and nothing could shake me down from that happiness. One morning, I woke up and took in all that had happened, as if it were all a dream. My life seemed to fall perfectly into place. It was almost surreal. Is everything as you wanted, sweetie? Uh... Diana? What? Ah! what? Why are you here? Why are we... What? Whoa, Diana. Diana. Why are you here, girl? I sharply turned my head to see a woman dressed in a gold and black gown staring at me with unnatural red eyes. For some reason, I felt as if she was familiar. I just couldn't place my finger on it. She twirled around a small purple pencil, smiling at me with a happy look. Naomi had I a purple pencil! Her. Isn't that Naomi's pencil? Diana's magic is purple. Oh. I thought Naomi had a purple pencil, Naomi though. had a purple pencil, that's what I'm saying! Oh, that's what I was saying! So Diana had something to do with the purple pencil. Uh, do you think Diana is secretly a matchmaker? For laundry, I mean. I don't know, I think... Maybe if she got the boys, then her family would be safe. She might feel grateful. Mm hmm that's true. Anyway, I, however, wasn't happy to have a sudden intruder. Who are you? There's no need to worry about who I am. I just wanted to make sure you got what you desired. Oh. I didn't want to just leave you empty-handed. That's weirdly nice of Diana. Seriously. What I desired. This was making no sense, yet in my heart I feel like it did. Something about her was making my heart both elated and angry, but I couldn't pin down why. How does she even appear in my room in the first place? Whoever you are, you need to leave. I, I won't hesitate to call the police. Oh, I'm leaving, all right. I just wanted a small pick-me-up. Chasing down boys and bringing them home was a hard job and took a lot out of me. Uh... I suddenly felt weak, staring at the woman. I felt warm and fuzzy inside my body, and I wanted the woman to cure me. Why was I feeling like this? Would you mind if I steal a little kiss for the road? It'll be a long trek to where I'm going, and I need to make sure I have the energy to get there. It's only fair since I helped you get your little happy ending, no? I felt myself nod. What was I doing? The woman smiled before walking over, leaning over me and kissing my cheek. 
I felt waves of energy deplete from my body through my cheek. Huh. I felt elated and confused, but I almost moaned at the feel of the kiss. After a short moment, the woman finally stepped away with a lick of her lips. She rubbed a finger over her lips as she stepped away from me. I couldn't help but stare blankly at her in surprise and confusion. Lovely. Now, this is the last time you'll see me. I hope you and your sweet Naomi have a wonderful life together. Alrighty then. The woman placed, of course, the woman <laughs> placed a pencil onto the cleavage of her dress. And well, I doubt her left. dress has any pockets. To be yeah, fair. true. Began to leave the room. I was too stunned to move, but I watched as the woman opened my balcony do window, floated up, and dropped from the balcony. And thus, my price is paid. I heard her voice echo in my mind before I heard the snapping of a pencil, breaking my thoughts. What was I thinking about? Oh yes, my life. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> I let my mind... Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that Diana wiped away the memories. Anyway, I let my mind wander to my future before my phone started ringing. I instantly picked it up. Hello? Hey, can I come over? Yeah, sure, what's up? I just need to talk to you. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. I grew worried. What was wrong? Did something happen? My mind began to sort through possibilities that could have occurred with Naomi. Soon enough, I heard Naomi's car pull up to the gate. I rushed to the front doors and opened them to see Naomi looking at me with a gigantic happy smile. Guess what happened? Wait, guess what? Just guess. Okay, um, did you get transferred up a level in class? Nope. Okay, did you win something? In a way. Before I knew it, I <gasps> knew it. Oh my. Perry holds the key to your to heart. your heart. There's something else in this Anastasia song. Take me with you. Before I knew it, Naomi was holding up a ticket that had the word Paris printed across it in fold letters. Guess who's going to Paris for summer before sophomore year? Paris? Oh, wow, that's awesome. I was smiled, seeing how happy Naomi was. She and I both knew that France was a great place to learn about cafes, second only to Italy. However, I felt my heart grow heavy. She was going to Paris, which holds the key to your heart. The key to the my heart, specifically. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> the date across the top noted that the trip was in three days and would last the entire summer. She and I had talked about going together, as a kind of international date of sorts. She was going to go alone. Huh? I know that look on your face. What's wrong? We'll be in a long-distance relationship. Naomi stared at me blankly before looking to her hands. She then started to giggle before la laughing almost hysterically. <laughs> what? What's so funny? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't show you. Naomi gently removed her fingers, revealing a second ticket behind hers. I gasped and stared as she smiled widely at me. We both can go. I felt my heart lift from its heavy feeling as I stared at the second ticket. I quickly rushed at Naomi and hugged her, kissing her. She was shocked, but as I felt her relax in my arms, she kissed me back. I'd, I'd probably react the same way, to be honest. <laughs> Take me to Paris. Someone, give me money. <laughs> Paris holds the key to your heart. I didn't want to wake up. Paris plays a part. I didn't want to wake up if this was indeed a dream. I felt light as a feather, not wanting to ever let go of this woman in my arms. There were no words that could describe the emotions within me. I felt joy, happiness, ecstatic, high all at once. Plus her hands on her my butt. butt. Yeah! <laughs> Finally! Here I was, holding the woman I wanted to be with like nothing else mattered. I vowed to cherish her and love her for the remainder of my days and beyond. And that was my happily ever after. And Naomi's love. Oh. That was cute. That was cute, but I... I do have a one complaint. Hmm? 
I do have a one complaint. And it is? I'm just saying all the boys got to have their little woohoo rendezvous moments with their, you know, their attraction and their sexuality and things. And this kind of, don't get me wrong, not everything in a relationship has to be about sex, but I don't know. It would be nice to have some, some lesbian representation where they're allowed to express that, you know? Not just be so pure and innocent. Yeah, like, it's what I, I really hate what people think, like, people talk about, like, Yuri or girls love, and they're just like, it's the purest form of love. It's like, you know, they have a sex, they can have a sex drive, too. You realize that, right? Right. Okay, there's nothing on my screen. For some reason, the credits aren't showing. Well, that is really strange, but basically, I'm just, let's, 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 add, let's add some spice in there to be like, hey. Hey, it's not the the purest form of love. No, no, it's beautiful. It is a pure love, but it's also is allowed to be sexual, especially in a game called Seduce Me. <laughs> I'm just so, saying. It. To be fair, the guys mm -hmm. are the main characters and they're incubi. But yes, I agree with you. I think it should be fair. I want it to be fair. Anyway, but having said all that, it was very cute. Naomi's a sweetheart, and I love her. Who's up next, Suzu? Yeah, let's, let's bang Suzu. <laughs> Alright, well that was Naomi's route. That was so sweet. It was cute. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye-bye.